Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at quadratic inequalities, and we're going to look at how we may need to form some quadratic inequalities and then go on to solve them. So here's our first example. It says the area of this rectangle is greater than 30 centimetres squared. So we've got this rectangle. We've got the length is 2x minus 5 centimetres, and the width is x plus 3 centimetres. And we've been asked to show that 2x squared plus x subtract 45 is greater than 0. Okay, so we want to show this. Well, let's go back to the information we've been given. We're told the area of this rectangle is greater than 30 centimetres squared. So the area of the rectangle. And to find the area of the rectangle, we would do the length multiplied by the width. So let's multiply the length by the width, and then let's write that that's greater than 30, because we know that the area will be greater than 30. So we just go down here. The length is 2x minus 5. The width is x plus 3. And then if we times them together, that would be the area of the rectangle. And we were told that that would be greater than 30 centimeters squared. So that would be greater than 30. Okay, so we want to get to this. So let's expand our brackets. So 2x times x would be 2x squared. 2x times 3 would be plus 6x. Minus 5 times x would be minus 5x. And minus 5 times 3 would be minus 15. So we've expanded our brackets, and we've still got that's greater than 30. Now let's simplify, because we've got 6x take away 5x, and 6x is take away 5x, which will be 1x. So that would give us 2x squared plus, and then we've got 6x minus 5x, that'd be 1x, or just x, and then subtract 15 on the left-hand side. And that's still greater than 30. Okay, we're nearly there. If we have a look at what we're trying to get to, we've got the 2x squared, fantastic. We've got the plus x, but here we've got this minus 45 and 0. So the right-hand side of the inequality is 0. But we've got the right-hand side of the inequality to be 30. So let's take 30 away from both sides of the inequality. So if we take 30 away from the left-hand side, we would get 2x squared plus x minus. And then we had minus 15. We're taking away number 30, so that would be minus 45. And then that would be greater than. And 30 take away 30 would be 0. So that's greater than 0. So that's it. So we've got 2x squared plus x minus 45 is greater than 0. So sometimes whenever you're given questions involving quadratic inequalities, you may need to form that quadratic inequality. And in this situation, we were given a rectangle and we're told the area was greater than 30 centimetres squared. So we just find an algebraic expression for the area of the rectangle and we put it greater than 30. And then we just rearranged it to be in the format they wanted. And that's it. OK, so we've done the first part of that question. And then the next part of the question would usually be then to solve that inequality. And perhaps we might need to use the solution to work something out. So let's have a look at the next part. So we've been asked to work out the range of the possible values of x. So we want to find the possible values of x. So if we go back, we got 2x squared plus x minus 45 is greater than 0. So let's go on down here. So we had 2x squared plus x minus 45 is greater than 0. Now we want to find the possible values of x. So let's solve this quadratic inequality. Let's solve 2x squared plus x minus 45 is greater than 0. So let's do that. So we had 2x squared plus x minus 45 is greater than 0. Okay, so we want to solve this quadratic inequality. So we want to find whenever 2x squared plus x minus 45 is greater than 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch the graph of 2x squared plus x minus 45, or y equals 2x squared plus x minus 45. And then once we've sketched it, we can see when that quadratic is greater than 0. So let's do that. So let's sketch this. So to sketch it, I want to find ideally when this quadratic will cross the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is to find where it crosses the x-axis, we're going to let y equal 0. So we get that 0 equals 2x squared plus x minus 45. And if we solve that, we can find out where it crosses the x-axis. So to solve this, I'm going to try to factorize it. So 0 equals, and then bracket, 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 bracket. And then if we factorize it, then let's try to factorize it. So 2x squared, let's go for 2x and x. And we want to put two numbers in the bracket so that whenever we expand them, we're going to get that minus 45 on the end. So we want two numbers that will times together to be minus 45. But also when we expand our brackets, we get the plus 1x in the middle. So I'm thinking 5 here and a 9 here. And I'm thinking plus 5 and minus 9. Because 2x times x would be 2x squared. 2x times 5 would be 10x. Take away 9x would be 1x. And minus 9 times 5 would be minus 45. Okay, so we factorized it. Now we can solve it. We can find the solutions here. This one, x would be equal to minus 5. To make that bracket 0, x would be minus 5. To make this bracket 0, I'm just going to write out 2x minus 9 equals 0. I'm going to add 9 to both sides to get 2x equals 9. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get x equals 4.5. So that means that the quadratic graph will cross the x-axis at minus 5 and 4.5. So let's sketch it. 
So that's our sketch of y equals 2x squared plus x minus 45. It crosses the x-axis at negative 5 and 4.5. Now we want to find when this quadratic is greater than 0. So when is this quadratic graph above the x-axis? So if we have a look here, all these values are above the x-axis. So all these values of 2x squared plus x minus 45 are above the x-axis. So it'd be any value of x that is greater than 4.5. So x is greater than 4.5. Obviously, 4.5 is equal to 0, but any value of x that is greater than 4.5 would give us an answer that's positive. And likewise, any value of x here to the left of negative 5 would be above the x-axis. So here, negative 6 would work. It would give us a positive negative 7, negative 5.1, and so on. So all these values would work. So any value of x that is less than negative 5 or any value of x that is greater than 4.5 would give a positive answer. And that's it. Now, we were asked to work out the possible range of values for x. That's important with these questions. We go back to the context. So here we've got an area of a rectangle. And if x was negative here, we would have 2 times a negative, which is a negative, minus 5. And that would mean that this is a negative length. So that means that the negative value of x wouldn't make sense in this question. So these solutions here wouldn't actually work in this context. So that means the possible values for x would work for our situation in terms of the area of a rectangle, being having an area greater than 30 centimeters squared. The values of x would have to be greater than 4.5. Any value of x that's greater than 4.5, if you substitute it in, you would get an area of the rectangle that is greater than 30 centimeters squared. And that's it. So the range of possible values of x would be any value of x that is greater than 4.5. And that's it. OK, let's look at our next question. OK, so now let's have a look at our next question. So our next question, rather than being based on the area of a shape, such as a rectangle or a triangle or something like that, we've got a algebraic situation. So we're told that Finn thinks of a positive number x. So it's a positive number. That's quite important. We're told that Hever's number is one more than three times Finn's number. So her number is one more than three times his number. Well one more than three times his number well three times his number would be three x because that's three times his number and one more than that would be three x plus one so hever's number is one more than three times finn's number so that means that if his number is x her number would be three x plus one because it's one more than three times his number okay so we've got what his number is x and we know what hever's number is we're then told that half the product of finn's number and hever's number is less than 12. So half the product. Remember in maths, the word product means what you get when you multiply two things together. So whenever we multiply his number together with her number, then whenever you half it, so divide by 2, it's going to be less than 12. And we've been asked to show that 3x squared plus x minus 24 is less than 0. OK, so we want to show this inequality. So let's start with the information we've been given. We're told that half of the product. So let's find the product of Finn's number and Hever's number. So if his number is x, and her number is 3x plus 1, that would be the product of their numbers. We'd times them together. So x bracket 3x plus 1 is the product of their numbers. You could write 3x squared plus x and expand it. That's fine as well. But I'm just going to leave it like that at the minute. Now we're told that half of the product, well, to find half of the product, we would divide it by 2. So we're dividing it by 2. And we're told that is less than 12. So that would be less than 12. So here we have now got an inequality. We have got that half of the product of their numbers is less than 12. OK, now let's rearrange this and hopefully we'll get to this. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the inequality by 2. And I'm going to do that to get rid of this divide by 2. So on the left hand side, we'll be left with x bracket 3x plus 1, just multiplying this side by 2, get rid of the divide by 2. And on the right hand side of the inequality, 12 times 2 would be 24. So that's great. Now I'm going to expand the brackets x times 3x is 3x squared and x times 1 will be plus x and that is less than 24 and as you can see we're almost there we just now need to take 24 away from both sides of the inequality so the left hand side would be 3x squared plus x minus 24 and the right hand side of the inequality would be 0 and that's it so we've shown that 3x squared plus x minus 24 is less than 0 and that's it so this question was a bit different than the last one because the last one was based on the area of a rectangle. And the, quite often you'll see that whenever you've been asked to form algebraic inequalities, it may be the area of a triangle or the area of a rectangle or something like that. But it may be a situation like this where you've been given some information and you need to form an inequality. 
Okay, and then if we have a look at the next part of the question, the next part of the question says, find the possible ranges of values for Finn's number x. We want to find the possible range of values for Finn's number, because he thinks of a positive number x. Okay, so let's go back to the inequality. The inequality is 3x squared plus x minus 24 is less than 0. So let's write that down. 3x squared plus x minus 24 is less than 0. So what we want to do here is we want to try and solve this and find the possible values of x. So let's do that. So let's solve this. So to solve this, I'm going to draw the graph of y equals 3x squared plus x minus 24. And to draw this, I'm going to sketch the x-axis and y-axis and find where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so here we've got our x-axis and y-axis, and we want to sketch this graph. So to sketch this graph, I want to find where it crosses the x-axis. So to find where it crosses the x-axis, you let y equal 0. So we've got 3x squared plus x minus 24 is equal to 0. And let's solve this. So let's try and factorize. So we've got 3x squared, so I'm going to go for 3x and x. And we want to find two numbers that whenever you put them in the brackets, they'll times together to be negative 24. And when you expand the brackets, you get that plus 1x in the middle. So I'm thinking 3 here and 8 here because, and let's think that'll be plus 3 and minus 8. So let's see, 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 3 is 9x. Take away 8x would be 1x, fantastic. And minus 8 times 3 would be minus 24. So that's fantastic. So now we just need to make each bracket 0. So here x would be equal to negative 3. So it's going to cross a negative 3. And here we've got 3x minus 8 equals 0. Add 8 to both sides to get 3x equals 8, and divide by 3 to get x equals 8 over 3, or 8 thirds, or 2.6666666, and so on. Okay, so let's sketch our quadratic. So it would look something like that. It crosses at negative 3, and it crosses at 8 thirds, or 2.6666666, and so on. Okay, so we've now sketched our graph, and so let's go back to the inequality. So we want to find when this quadratic, this 3x squared plus x minus 24, is less than zero. In other words, when is this quadratic below the x-axis? And it's below the x-axis for any value of x that's in between negative 3 and 8 thirds, or your 2.6666 and so on. Because any value of x that's in between negative 3 and 8 thirds will give us a negative when we substitute it into that quadratic. For instance, if you put in 0, you get negative 24, and so on. So that means that x, the values of x that would work, that would satisfy this inequality, would be any value of x that is bigger than negative 3, but less than 8 thirds, or 2.6666, and so on. Now, if we go back to the question, we're told to find the possible range of values for Finn's number x. Now, Finn's number was a positive number. So here, we've got the possible values for x that would work for this inequality, but remember, he had a positive number. So that means for his answer, his value x, it would have to be any value of x that is bigger than 0, because it has to be positive, but it has to be less than 8 thirds, or that 2.6666, and so on. So that's it. So that's the possible values that Finn could have chosen. Any value of x is bigger than 0, but less than 2.666, and so on. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at how to form some quadratic inequalities based on situations such as the area of a rectangle being greater than 30 centimeters squared, or a situation where two people think of a number and so on. And we've looked at how to form those quadratic inequalities and how to solve them. And also how it's important to go back to the context of the question sometimes and just make sure that whenever you get your possible values for x, that you might need to potentially adjust them for the situation you've been given. So in this case here, we knew that x could be negative because it wouldn't work for that length so we only chose the values of x that were positive values for x likewise for finn's number we were told that it was a positive number so we excluded the negative values and the zero as well and that's it so i really hope you found this video useful and if you have found it useful please like it and please subscribe to my youtube channel thank you cheers bye